He's going to be talking on blurring the lines of design in hospitality. Welcome, Amit. All right, thank you very much for that introduction as well. And uh, welcome everybody. I'm sure that Biryani has not been helping with the aftermath of, uh, you know, going sitting through all the panel discussions, especially you here. <laughs> Is it kicking in now? <laughs> okay. So, um, so we put together something a little different. I'm not going to be talking about one specific project. I'm going to be talking about this topic, which I found really interesting, um, called blurring the lines of design in hospitality. And uh, as I was doing my uh, little bit of homework on this yesterday and going through my notes like a good boy in the night and stuff like that, I realized one thing, I need glasses. So <laughs> if you watch, if you see me stalling for a bit, it's not because I don't know what to say next, it's because I can't see. So talking about this, let me jump right in. Why, what I'm talking about over here is uh, blurring the lines of design and hospitality. You know, it's no more the time where a designer can walk into a hospitality space and say, okay, here I am, I'm going to do my design, give them the design and then walk out. What, everybody here now has a say. It's the brand managers, it's of course the client of course who gives you that, but it's the brand managers, the guys who are ultimately going to be running the place. You're right from your chef to your bartenders to your service guys. Everybody's got a say when it comes to F&B. You know, we have to stop looking at spaces uh, like they're one dimensional, like when we're talking about a hotel. It's not like anymore you can walk into a lobby and say this is where you check in. Or you go to a restaurant and say this is where you eat. You go to a room and you say that this is where you sleep. Everything has become so seamlessly integrated with each other and everybody ultimately it's all about now augmented hosp hospitality as I read up about this yesterday where augmented hospitality really means exactly what the client wants. Anything and everything that they ask for has to be there at your beck and call when you ask for it, right? So I'm going to be taking you through a few examples of what we're doing, um, some of the projects that we've done, and how this was incorporated as collaborative efforts. OK, so this was the Novotel Vijayawada that we had done, um, maybe completed just pre-pandemic. So if you look at, it, look at this here, that's where the reception is. The theme, so basically here we work with the design heads of the group where here it was Accor. And uh, they give you the, the brief, of course, as to where you can take it in terms of design. And, but the space planning is something that we do hand in hand with them. So when it comes to like the reception, you see the reception right there on the top right is exactly right next to the all day dining, which in previous days it would be like, you know, you have your little coupe where you walk into the reception, you get your little welcome, and then after that you go towards where you eat. But here it's so seamlessly open into this space as well. And it works beautifully because people who are waiting will just go get a coffee or something like that over there. This space here is called a gourmet bar. Now this is also a part of the space. You can see the reception. On the left you have the all day dining and on the right you have the gourmet bar. The gourmet bar is where they're actually at the bar itself making these kind of cold snacks for you, making you a sandwich. You can go and sit there and work. You can sit wherever you want, of course, and work. And you know, you want to order something to drink or something to eat, it's all open for you there. That, of course, is the specialty restaurant. Now, that's a sanctum space where you, know, you sort of want your own little um, privacy when you're at a specialty restaurant, when you're spending that kind of money. So that's why that's a separate space. This is the top view. The theme for this hotel was the four seasons of uh, you know, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, which is where we tried to bring that about. I think I pressed that too hard. All right, OK. So this is the atrium view, where you have an aerial view of how the carpets look. Sorry, am I fiddling with this too much? OK. Habit with my staff, sorry. But here's where we have the central area. And of course, we have on the first floor, there's a little open, small landscape space where all the guests of the hotel can actually come there for a private uh, you know, tea time or high tea at that time, where in fact, it does not need uh, you to be a part of the regular, you know, the restaurant where everybody else is also going to be. So when it comes to the rooms, again, the room demands that you sort of have different 
uh, things that you can do in the room as well. It's not just somewhere you go in the night and retire. You can actually hold your meeting there. There are things like interconnecting rooms which are even more important now, where suppose you want to have a meeting in the next room, you don't want to hire a full suite. You've got this happening in the next door. You've got your meetings happening. And you have the space over here as well for your, you know, uh, away from the crowd and the mess so that you can have your good night's rest as well. The service apartments, again, over here, we had, when I'm talking about blurring the lines, we had the service uh, team from the hotel, the general manager, who's one of the most important people, come on, comes on board even before, while the project is actually being done. And he comes on board and tells us exactly what he would like to have in the service apartment, in their pantry, how they want it set up, and stuff like that, you know? So, when we're talking about the common areas, where you have, this is the rooftop of the hotel, where you have some lounging area, you have a little bar area, but everything is very seamlessly integrated. And all of these come from various inputs from the client right up to, I'm talking about up to the service uh, staff as well. This is another project we just finished post the pandemic again, is the Radisson Blue Resort in uh, Vizag, where we did the interiors. Here again, it was just a collaborative effort with the team of Radisson uh, that came in from Delhi. They, they gave us inputs right from the point of time where you get budgets or you even go into the point of design as well. So, you know, they would tell us about uh, being, Wysak being like a tier three city, they would give us inputs about, you know, how much we're allowed to spend or how we're allowed to go over the top in certain areas and certain areas sort of hold back. So there's a lot of discussion that happens on this. So like I said, it's not something that I could have walked in and said, okay, this is my design, go ahead and execute it. That's not going to happen in today's times, you know, because everybody has a say. And ultimately, they're the guys running the space. So they have to have that input. This is the all day dining. Yeah, so a lot of communal spaces also, like the amphitheater in the outdoor area was an idea that we gave and we said, okay, let, you know, so the architect of course took it forward, but this was an idea that we said since it was such an open area and it was towards the ocean, we, this, when you sit at the amphitheater, you can actually watch a show in front of it and you can also have a good view of the ocean as well here. So luckily for us, the architect actually took our suggestions and is normally, I won't go further on that one. Yeah, so coming to something a little uh, maybe more close to our heart in terms of F&B and wellness being like at the forefront of design nowadays in terms of hospitality. Uh, F&B, we do a lot of bars and restaurants, uh, one of which is the Farzi Cafe right here in Hyderabad, which maybe a lot of you might have been to as well. This was a space that actually we created um, about in 2017 ending was when it actually opened and it created a big impact in, in Hyderabad. And uh, now, another five years later is when they actually said we have to reinvent this. So when you have something like that where you've created already and you've created an impact with it and people have you know, taken a liking to, his, to it, when you actually have to reinvent that, there's so much more that I had to do in terms of, you know, I, can't, I had to take everybody's creative inputs so that we could make it that one more wow factor. Because it's very easy for somebody to walk in to a renovated space and say, okay, kuch nahi kia. You know, so it's important that we all had to uh, listen. And uh, what we've done here again is a whole collaboration of so many different people. This is just at the entrance lobby that we had given a facelift. Uh, of course, the piece de resistance over here is the book rack, which is about 100 feet long and 16 feet high. And here we had a stylist also with us who collaborated because I was very anal about, uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, to speak like that, but anyway, I said the, uh, Books were meant to be color coded. They were meant to be in a certain way, like you know, where I wanted my red, blues, and yellows and stuff. And to do such a large wall with 6,000 books, we needed help on board. We couldn't be standing over there for those, you know, two, three days and do it. So once you give them a sketch and give it to them, then of course they had their own inputs, and that's how we sort of styled the book rack as well. So everything else in turn in the design also stems from right here, you know, where we've taken that one wall as our inspiration. And if you see the space, I think the slide before this will show you the stage backdrop that you see over there. The ladders are inspired from these tall libraries that you see across the world where you have ladders that you move along the library wall to pick up your book that you want. So the ladders are abstractly placed and they're LED ladders uh, behind the stage. You have a little bit of murals that are fun murals in between that also relate to the whole theme. 
So I'm a strong believer that anything that we put or in its place, or whether it's a color or whatever you do, has to have some kind of meaning. So when we put it there, any kind of, if it was a design presentation, of course, I would have been talking about why we used what color and everything. But uh, since we're talking about how we can, uh, you know, how the lines of uh, design nowadays in hospitality are sort of merged with each other, that's where I'm going to stick the conversation at. This was the outdoor area as well, which was again covered on top for Farzi. This is uh, one of those classic examples where I actually had to walk in and uh, the client didn't live in Goa, he lived in Calcutta and the guy said from on the phone itself, I've done a project with him before, he said on the phone go and see the place and do what you want but this is my brief and then after that go ahead. So he didn't want to see because we had a two month time period to turn the place over so he didn't want to see you know 3D views or designs and stuff like that so we had to just go with it but then along the way because his team was stationed at Goa while we were doing the project. And uh, we had, like, for example, there's a very unique feature at this space where the bar is not your typical two-level bar. It's a single-level bar where it allows for interaction between the bartender, the bar consultant, the mixologist, and the guest. So he can ask them what they want to do, and he can actually fix you a cocktail, which I'm sure most of us need right now after all of this. Um, I'm, you can wait till the evening, I think, what, 7 o'clock? Okay, so we'll be there. So basically that's how uh, this project also came about. There was so much more of input that we got from the team itself and not from the client, even though he was working virtually with us. It was everybody who was there at the space that really put their heads together and that two months to achieve a full transformation of the space. That's, I think, a collaborative effort and it can be really nothing else. So to conclude, I just uh, wanted to read out actually. So this time I better read if I can see. Uh, a line that I read last night when I was preparing for this that says that for today it's so important that there's less emphasis on ownership of an idea and more focus on the collaborative process because collaboration is where it all lies at right now. It's so, more, so much more exciting and that's exactly sort of where I think all of us need to be in that space where we're feeding off each other's ideas and not really, like I said, being the owner of that idea or trying to be the owner of that idea. So thank you very much. Thank you.